Well, hello there and happy May Day. We're in the beginning of May, my favorite time of year. Well, I have lots of favorites, but I love this time because everything starts to sprout and bloom and really be so beautiful. And I'm going to start today by taking you on a little trip through my garden and you can join me in this song. Come, follow, 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 follow me. Whither shall I follow, follow, follow? Whither shall I follow, follow thee? To the green wood, to the green wood, to the green wood, green wood tree. Come, follow, 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 follow me. Whither shall I follow, follow, follow? Whither shall I follow, follow thee? To the green wood, to the green wood, to the green wood, green wood tree. You know, I think I'll pick some of these flowers because I want to make a May crown with you. So how about these? Get some grass here too. As we make the crown with grass and flowers. There's these flowers. And what else do I see that I can take? Hmm. I'll just keep looking as I walk along. Oh, look at this rose. Very pretty. And as we go through here. You might see a bee or a hummingbird. Here we go. Through the tunnel. Ooh-wee! There's a lot of roses in here. Oh, these lovely pink ones. Maybe I'll take one of those. Put in our May crown. And we just keep walking. Oh, I like this one. It's a nice color, isn't it? Oh, I want to show you something. Look how much how tall this one be? I got it climbed all the way to the top of that tree there. That tall bamboo and the tree. So we come round. There's the distance. Oh, this rose right here, this red one, is named, they all have names, and this one is called Cinco de Mayo in honor of, well, Cinco de Mayo, an important day. Here's a columbine. You see that bee buzzing around over there? More roses up high. Oh, this is a pretty view. I don't know if the sun's too bright for you, but I love looking at this view. And here's a favorite one of mine, stripes. It's always nice to have a, more than one color on a rose. So, come, follow, 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 follow. Follow me, whither shall I follow, 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 whither shall I follow, follow thee, to the green wood, to the green, to the green wood, green wood tree. And we're back around to this spot again. Give me a moment. And I'll get us ready for our lesson. So here are some of the things that I found to make our May crown. I started it already. So you take your grass and you start to wind it around itself more and more. And, and do you see how I'm making a ring out of it? Measure it to the size of your head so that it's a nice ring. Then it sits on your head like a crown. Round we go. And you can just tuck tuck in the edges. This 
this tall grass is so strong that it'll hold up. Now keep in mind a mid crown is just for one day. It does not have to be perfect. It's just a nice thing for one day. So we wind it around. If you have extra pieces you can tear them off or you can wind them in. There we go. See how that looks. Now I then I can take my different flowers and tuck it between the pieces of grass. You can go all the way around and have your made crown to have flowers all the way around or you can put them just in the front and on the sides. There's those pretty blue ones. You know, I grow roses in every color I think, but there's no such thing as a rose that's blue. So if I want blue in my garden, I have to plant something else or find it in the wild. They're pretty blue flowers that are wild too. Let's see, this one can go. You just put them in between the pieces of grass and a little bit at a time and after a few minutes you start to have a May crown. Let's see, here's another rose. Where's that one I picked? Oh yeah, nice, it smells good. We'll just put it right in that little space there between the grass. I'll put it this way, I think. There we go. And here's a nice flower I saw. I don't think you saw me pick this one because <laughs> the camera was pointed a different direction. But here you go. We well, just put it in to a spot and we put a couple more in. Hey, you rose, don't fall out. And you can tuck the stems in however you can make them work. And then you have your May crown. How do you like that? Oh, don't fall out. I said don't fall out. Okay. <laughs> well, there we go. And if I put it on my head, let's see. I already have one May crown on, but here's how this one would look if I put this one on. A little bit grassy, but I could trim those edges. So that's our May crown. I'm just going to put it... Um, maybe over here, hang it on there, and let's go on to our lesson. I want you to go get your Elm music book, this one, which you may have your name, can't really see it the way I wrote it, but your name is on there and it says Elm, and let's open it up. If you have a new one, you're going to need to put your name on, right, Elm on the front, so that you know what it's for. Make a title page with some pictures of um, instruments and things that we've done in Elm. And then we're going to make a page with treble clefs. Remember we did this before. Here's some that I did. Remember that? Well, let's go to a new page. And let's make treble clef there for those of you who, who um, might have forgotten how we do this. I'm going to try and use a dark color so you can really see it. But you can use any color you want. So to start, we start with that umbrella hook. Remember that? So I make a nice, I'm making mine thick so you can see. But it's just a hook on the bottom and then straight up. Then we make what looks like a kind of narrow uppercase D to the right there and then we swirl around to the left and then across over to make this beautiful swirl. I love making treble clefts. I, I think it feels so good on my hand to just go swooping up, cross over, and then a big swirl. Choose that you can make a tiny one over here if you'd like. Every color that you have, I gave you a few colors, but you might have more. You can layer them on top of each other and make rainbows. Yeah. And sometimes I have someone who likes to do something a little wild, so they make. They do this and, you know, something like this. And 
That's a crazy looking treble clef. Remember how um, I mentioned in the story that a treble clef originally came from this fancy version of the letter G. You know, it looks kind of like a cursive G. Can we see that? But um, with a little spiral on the end, so you go up. There's that loop that's kind of like the loop at the top of the treble clef. And then they leave out this hook that's usually part of the G by the time it, and it starts to look like that and you can see how it might have turned into a treble clef over the course of time so I'd like you to fill your page up with every color that you have every size and make some crazy shapes if you'd like there we go now when you're finished with that I'm ready for you to go to the next page I'm going to fold mine this way And we're going to draw a musical staff. So, musical staff has five lines, like you have five fingers. And we're going to make, we're going to start um, so that they're two fingers apart. So we put a line here, then our second line, third. You're just making a little mark to get ready to draw the lines. That way, you've got your spacing the way you want it. And two fingers. Mine's going to be a little wider than yours because my fingers are a little bigger. Then as straight as you can make it, go straight across the page. Okay, let's see. How straight can you make it? All the way across. There's our middle line. And the last one. Make sure you only do five. Things get very confusing if you do more than five or less. So we have one, two, three, four, five lines. If you went, if you did too many, you can go on a new page. It's okay. If you did too few, just add another one. But let's make sure they're far enough apart that your jewels can fit. Remember I gave you all those jewels to be your notes on your staff. I'm making mine thicker so you can really see them well. How's this? Not pretty good? There we go. Make them nice and thick so you can see the lines. Now, once we have that drawn, we can do a treble clef on there. Now, the treble clef starts at the bottom. The hook is below the staff, so make sure your bottom line doesn't go so close that you don't have room for your hook. Here's your hook. And we go all the way up above the top. Do you see that? All the way up. I'm going to fill mine in so it's thicker. You can really see it. You can just do one line. Then we, uh, we're going to cross over here at the second line, so it's going to look like this. You try that. So we make this nice curve, the narrow curve. And then get ready because we're going to make this big swirl that goes around here. So the big swirl comes down, touches the bottom, and swirls around that second line from the bottom. Do you see that? And that's why I mentioned that it was originally a G, because this line is our G line. So the treble clef is showing us where the G is. Great. All right. Now. Get out your jewels, because we're going to put the jewels on the different parts of the, of the uh, staff. So first, we're going to use our, let's see, let's use, um, let's put the jewels on the spaces. Now, when we say on the spaces, we mean in the spaces. That's how we talk when we talk about music. So when I say it's on the space, I mean here. Can you put that first one right there in between the bottom two lines? Then take another jewel. <laughs> I had to put tape on mine so they'd stick and put it in this space. That's why I wanted you to make sure your lines were far enough apart. Take another one and we put it in this space between the middle line and the second from the top 
And then our last one for the moment is in this space. Doesn't that look nice? Now, there's a word that we all use when we talk about what we wash in the morning. Our face. And face rhymes with space. And so we use the word face to describe, to uh, remember the names of these notes. So we have F, A, C, E. Face. Get it? Say it with me. F, put your finger on your jewel. A, C, E. All right, I'm going to point to one and let's see if you get it right. That's A. That's E. Like the E string for those of you who play violin. Here's F. What I leave out. There's C. Okay. So practice with that yourself so we know F A C E. You know, we have two other spaces I, um, that you can see right away. This one down here below the staff, that's a space. It's just the space below the bottom line. And this one above the top line. So it lines up kind of nicely to see them all there. Good. So this one below we call D. And whoa, where are you going, Paige? And this one up here is a high G. All right, let's take our spaces off. Take them all off. And I want to see if you can put yours on. I'm going to give you a moment. And then I'm going to put mine on and you see if they're the same. Okay, put F on. Now put A. Now C. And now E. And for extra points, remember that, that high one above the top line? That's G. And what was this one down here called? I'm listening. That's right. This one right here is called D. Good one. All right, let's take them all off again. And we're going to learn the lines. Now, when we say a note is on the line or a line note, we mean that the line is going right through the middle of it. See how that works? It's not sitting on the line. It has the line going right through the middle. So we have that first line. Let's see if you can get yours on the line, as we say. When you do it with a jewel, it really does feel like you're on the line because you're putting it on there. Like a piece of grass stuck in there. And you'll notice we have five lines. We only had four spaces within the stuff, but we have five. Come on now, stick. Uh-oh, I'm slipping. There, you can see that. So, here, 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 and here. All five. Did you get them on there? Great. All right, so these also have letter names. We have E, G, B, D, and F. Well, there's some things that we say to remember that. We don't have a, that doesn't spell a word, E-G-B-D-F, E-G-B-F, that doesn't really make much of a word. But we make up little sentences. So we have a sentence that goes like this. Every good boy deserves fudge. E-G-B-D-F. Well, I'm sure the girls are wondering, what about their fudge? Hey, come back here. So, we have one for the girls, too. Let's see. Every girl deserves... No. Every girl buys delicious fudge. So, let's send the girls out to buy all the really good fudge. 
and then um, they could share it with the boys. E, G, B, D, F. Great. I'm going to take these off, and I'm going to see if you can find the right place to put them. Are you ready? Okay. I would like you to put your B on there. Did you find the right spot? Now I would like you to put your F up. Remember fudge. Now I'd like you to put your um, your G. G for girl or G for good. What about the D? That goes here. And the last one that I need to put on, what is it? That's right. I heard you. It's E right here. So now we have E, G, B, D, F. Well, let's put the spaces on in between those. If you need to move your line notes over a little bit so the spaces will fit, then um, do that. So we have a space here. Remember F, A, uh-oh, I have an extra flower, C, I have to use flowers for my notes next time, put that in the May crown, and E, hey, I lost one, which one did I lose? That was my low E down here, my tape is getting tired. So now we have them all lined up, don't they look nice like that? And if we said their names, remember, we know the names of the lines, E, G, B, D, F, and we know the names of the spaces, F, A, C, and E, so we can say them in order, starting at the bottom. E, F, G, A, B on the middle line, C, D, E and F. And remember those ones on the edges. We could put this D down below and this G up above. If you don't have enough jewels or if you've lost them or turned them into something else to play with, hey, come back. Um, you can use pennies instead or buttons. So now we have D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. E, F, G. Okay, so let's take off this one, the E, the F, and the G. And what do we, oh, that just keeps falling. I'm going to have to put another one up there. Stay there, you. Okay, now what do we have? A, B, C, D, E, F and G. There's that musical alphabet we've talked about so much. Let's do it backwards. G, F, E, D, C, B, and A. Now let's remember what some of those notes go with. For you violinists, A is your open A. And way up here, this one, E is your open E. For you who are learning the recorder, here's the B that we start um, hot cross buns on. Um, so these notes all go with the music that we play and sing, and you will soon be learning more and more about that. Um, but I want you to play with your jewels or pennies, flowers, buttons, whatever you have, and start to get familiar with what the names are so that you get quicker and quicker. I'm just going to do one last one with you. Let's see if you can find an F. Ready? Go. Did you find that one? And some of you might have found this one because there's a low F and a high F. Okay. How about hmm, how about A? 
Are you ready? Did you get it there? There's A, the open string A or the second note of hot cross buns. Well, how about D? I'm going to just give you a moment. All right, here it is. There's the D on the line, and below the bottom line is the D in the space, the low D that for the violins, that's your, your low D string. All right, let's see. Last one. How about E? Well, I think those violinists will probably start with this one because that's your E string. But we also have a low E. Where is that? Do you remember? Every good boy de deserves fudge. There's the E. So you can have a lot of fun. Write down, maybe make some cards with letters and, and uh, draw a card and see if you can find the right place for it to go. And you're going to get better and better at finding notes on the musical staff. So I'll see you next time. And let's sing. Sing your way home at the close of the day. Sing your way home, drive the shadows away. Smile every mile, for wherever you roam, it will brighten your road, it will lighten your load, if you sing your way home. Goodbye and thank you, pre-orchestra.